Welcome back, everybody, to the Back Nine coverage of round one of the 2021 Music City Open presented by Dynamic Discs. I'm Brian Earhart, joined here by my fellow lefty co-host, Nathan Queen. Nathan, we are back in the woods. We have had an interesting round so far from a gameplay standpoint. Some unorthodox lines being taken by our players. Some nice birdies. A few players on a decent pace. Yes, some, a bit of strange play, but everybody's kind of ending up around the same area. We've got three players on the card at three down. Will Schustrig having a bit of struggles, not being able to get the birdies, but almost keeping it clean. He's sitting at one over. You see myself and Luke Sansom six down through the front nine. We've got three players with Mason Ford, Corey Ellis, and Colton Montgomery all at five down. So some hot starts on this front. We'll see what happens on the back. Hole number 10 was moved to a short pin position. I actually really like this change. It makes this 392 foot par three just really solid. Shout outs again to Flight Factory for a fantastic drone flyover. Check out Flight Factory discs. Lucas is setting up the downhill sidearm flex. I like this play on this hole. Um, you got just a little bit of right to left movement before you want it to flatten back out. And he puts that to edge of circle two. Pretty scary run on this yeah. on this elevated basket. This one's pretty high up there. Okay, Nico cutting in a little bit early. That shot ended up so solid. 30 feet from the basket. Yeah, going with the Heiser stand-up on this one rather than the flex. Uh, there's a little more room for the flex on this one now that we've gotten here. Kevin also going sidearm, little Heiser flip. Okay. And gets down to that last tree, rolls backwards. That's in that scary to run range. This basket is elevated and it's out in the open where there's um, a bit more wind than you felt the rest of the round. Right off that middle tree, kicking off to the left side. It's not fun over there. Yeah, just a look. He's grip locked a few of them this round, just hanging on a bit too long. Okay, he's got a little bit of a line. He's got to go forehand roller. Sweet. And that is a great scramble from Will. You always just have to remember how many truly like true pressure situations Will has been in and how many crazy shots we've seen him execute in years past. So we can't count him out of any situation. It's just always interesting to see him come back after all this time away. And you see a couple soft bids there from Lucas and, and Kevin. Nico with the best chance here to convert for the birdie on hole 10. Oh, no. And it... it it hit pretty far left side. We would have liked to have seen that one stay. It was in just there. kind of an entertaining miss, I guess. Yeah, and Will's got a very short downstroke on that putt. He doesn't really seem to have much spin. He's trying to push putt without much downswing, mm -hmm. and he's having trouble getting it up. Oh no. And that one should have stuck. I feel like I just got kicked in the stomach. That hurts. We've been seeing just some nasty spit outs recently. Couple nasty ones at the match play championships and now we see one on this hole. And that, oh, the elevated pin can have something to do with that. Definitely. The, the angle that your putt goes in is gonna be slightly different than Man, normal. Lower pole. That's a stinger right yeah, there. Yeah, that one was, that was, should have been a par there. And that moves us into the shortest hole on the course. 
204 feet. Throw it straight. If you get a par, you feel bad. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Easiest hole in the course, 2.45 average. And Nico sliding up the right side. Yeah, this is like, this is why the hole's playing so easy. Any player that has a good overstable approach to this that they can flick, it's just completely framed up for that shot. It's uphill, you can slide it up to the basket. Yeah, that came out a little bit low from Kevin, but it slides right up to it, only 204 feet. Nice, smooth forehand. And that is pretty much three park jobs. Will is just really wanting a birdie right now. And puts himself to about 25 feet. Yeah, this is that tester range he's been struggling with this round. Let's see if he can get it. And pretty consistent here. Just low. Just every time. I feel for you, brother. I definitely feel for you. Yep. These are the rounds of disc golf that just feel so long and... Everything feels nerve wracking. So, in about that same distance, we just saw that spit out from. Luckily, he doesn't let that get to him. He hits in the same spot again, like he's supposed to. Good birdie from Lucas. Nico and from Kevin here. Go from easiest to hardest par three, I think. If I need to get up and down in a pressure situation, I'm grabbing the AVRX3 every time. When you can connect the visualization of the shot that you're trying to throw with the feel of the disc in your hand, that's really when magic happens. I can trust throwing the disc as hard as I want or as soft as I want to do exactly what it's supposed to do. Like the AVR is the best putter of all time, the AVR X3 just might be the best approach disc of all time. Hole number 12, 379 uphill, par three, low ceiling. This is, this is a tough hole. It's a sweet shot to pure, but it's really hard to do so. Yeah, it seems like you need about 430 feet of power here at least with this low ceiling to get up to this hill. And even if you do get to that top tier of it, the grass is kind of long and you're not going to get much skip. Nico just slamming on a flex. That is really overstable. And Kevin's right, even a disc that gets to that point is really good in this hole. Yeah, inside circle too and has a clean look at it. Fantastic shot. Kevin going sidearm. Huh. Yeah, it's an interesting play. I kind of like the line. You can get that hyzer stand up on the hill the whole way. Just try to get to the top. Just get it to drift over. Maybe get a little bit of flare, but that grass up top makes it tough. Yeah, it's hard to park the hole with that line, but like you said, it might be easy to get to circle two. Lucas gets through the left side. And I know a lot of players just like hitting gaps better with a forehand. Yeah, definitely. You get to look at it the whole time. Throwing uphill as well. And Will gets one all the way to the top of the hill. He's wow. putting from kind of an obstructed lie. That had a lot of speed late. Yeah. That kept moving. Kevin, full commitment on the layup. <laughs> He's given us a show this round. 
He is. The man is hyped up. Yeah, not much of a look over there for Will. He's going to have to lay up after getting up to the top of the hill. We'll see if Nico can get one of those rare birdies on this hole. Just outside the circle, probably about 39 oh, feet. That is solid. What That's a, birdie. a sick birdie. Hole 12, third hardest hole in the course. 3.35 average. Funny enough, on this course that people were saying was soft, over half the holes averaged over par. You just really never know. So earlier on in the round, we called hole five a lefty hole. We'll call hole 13 here the righty hole, 276 foot. Pretty much stock mid-range hyzer here. You throwing righty on this one, Nathan? Maybe next year. <laughs> I did get a Thunderbird about 40 feet righty in practice. <laughs> not not terrible. Let's check out Nico's righty form. Love Nico throwing these little chip hyzers. Some of the cleanest technique that you'll pretty much ever see in disc golf comes from Nico. He can hit any angle. We've watched him dance from hyzer stand-up player to flex player just a short compact swing there oh yeah go in he likes it a bit false on the go in but uh he is inside the i'm circle. sure he's fine with 15 feet <laughs> he's his mannerisms this round are just amplified He looks to have pulled this one a bit wider than Kevin has, and he does. He's also about 15 feet. And just a bit too wide again, with a little bit of a late release from Will. He's still got a long circle two look here, I believe. Let's go, Will. Come on. Let's Give him the gatekeeper rewind. Gatekeeper rewind. Great putt from Will there. He needs that. Definitely needs that. That's a tough start. I mean, it's a tough start, tough middle. Hopefully he can close this round out with some birdies, starting with this one. Nico right on circle's edge here. Looking to not get big putted and connects on it. We've got a pretty good chance at our first star frame of the round here. No. Oh, I got him. <laughs> you did you did get him. That is brutal. You hate getting big putted from 15 feet. Yeah, that could be going back to some of those nerves from a spit out, but not quite what you want. We're going to Chain inspector giving the basket a nice thorough inspection. Hole number 14. This is an interesting hole. There's a low ceiling. You need to just creep behind these trees here, skip up to the basket. There's kind of a sucker gap on the right side that I've seen some turnovers sneak through. But if you have the sidearm, you're going to go with the sidearm. 
the miss is actually going long. People thinking they have the shot correct, and it just leaks too far forward. And just a little bit too high there. Catches that late cedar. And uh, he may have a long look from there, but it'll be tough to get the birdie. Like you said, the miss is long. He's gone in those cedars just behind the basket. Hopefully he'll have a clean putt. But like we saw on hole one, he doesn't really need one. Yeah, I guess not. Inside. This is going towards that inside line. Hits the inside line, let's go. Bad shot, great result, Will. Okay. I've been loving Lucas's forehand, but he sees something with the backhand line. Is he going turnover on the inside? It looks like he is. Yeah, and that's what I've seen happen a lot with that backhand turnover. Yeah, it looks like you throw it correctly and then you hit something. Just it's it's such a tight gap when, on that inside. Yeah, when you walk up to it, like in the fairway, you you see very quickly why not a lot of shots get through there. Yeah, just not quite the spin he needed on that one. Ooh, little shovel putt. Having to swing the disc towards his right side. Yeah, Kevin. Oh, he's just going spinner. Can't quite get it just a little bit too long. Puts himself in those cedars. Yeah, that's an interesting obstructed circle one putt there. We all have our own feelings about that. Yeah. Actually, you know what? For all the fans at home that are watching, leave us a comment on YouTube. What do you think about holes where there are obstructions inside of circle one, whether it's trees, bushes, that give a player no chance at making a putt, given Kevin did have a chance at making the putt? But let us know what your thoughts are. Should circle one always be clear of obstacles? And Will, with that lucky inside gap... Able to get back to even for the round with two birdies in a row. Surprisingly, the only birdie on the hole that we had. Hole number 15, I really like this tee shot. It's just ever so slightly bending to the right. So you can't throw dead straight. It's a very gentle turnover. You can get aggressive and go distance driver if you want. The second shot is not that difficult. You just have to maneuver the ground play, sneak into that corridor. Oh no, keep going. Some very swirly wind that we had today as well. Kind of makes this tee shot a bit harder to land it in the middle. Going for the hyzer stand up with the swirly wind, it's easy for it to turn it over and drift off to the right side or just lift it up and hyzer it out onto the left side. Nice shot. What a smooth line from Nico. Say what you want about the man. I love how creative he is with the backhand, how versatile he is. And this is starting to pan out. And that's in a great spot as well. He's over on the right side of the fairway, which gives you a slightly better angle into the, into the green. Oh, that's high, but I 
think he threw a slower disc. He's just on the edge. It'll be a little tricky to get down there. Maybe even forehand roller might be a decent option from where he's at. You still have to kind of climb over that brim on the left side. Good kick out there from Will. And I feel like you made this up shot sound slightly easier than it is. The basket is tucked up to the left on this little edge. If you don't get your disc to land on top of that edge, all right, he didn't roll away, but it was very possible. He's going to have a pretty easy putt from there. But you do want to land up on top. Yeah. Otherwise, you could get pretty far away. Yeah, I guess I failed to add that if you want to skip it up to the basket, you have to skip before the hill starts. Otherwise, you'll do what... Yeah, and here's this roll yeah. away. He does get a fortunate catch there and grabs inside to stay inside the circle. Ooh, little backwards patent pending yeah, skip shot. A lot shot. of pop on this with an overstable disc. And he does that very well. Yeah, what a shot. He snapped that thing. And he kind of catches that in between. Doesn't hit the flat on the bottom. Catches a little bit of that side hill, and he's got a tough par putt. Interesting footing here for Kev. Yeah, I feel his struggle there. It looks like his hand hit the ground. I've got that issue sometimes with that low straddle putt. Especially having the left foot way lower than yeah. the right. That is a sick three. That is a... Really, really good technical second shot. And Nico now starting to heat up on this back nine. He's four down just on the back nine here. Seven down for the round. A few gettable holes coming up and then one grab bag of a finisher. I'll show you what I mean in just a bit. Kevin in for the par. A little frustrated he didn't convert for that birdie. Uh, but moving into hole 16, another par 3, 368 feet. Once you travel about 310 or 315, you've got to hit this blind gap. Low to, ceiling. To move, yeah, low ceiling to move down the fairway. Uh, pretty tough to get to the green. Um, it's just kind of throw it where you want to and hope. There's a lot of trees blocking the basket. A lot of the pured shots end up like 30 to 35 short. You want to just kind of bend into this little corner yeah this has come out a bit straight and he skips into the gap but he's in that 60 60 to 70 foot range pretty tough to run down this hill all right lucas looks like he is lining up a turnover backhand and i think this is a better angle mm -hmm. this is turning a little early uh, but as far as getting to the green, this is a better angle. You can fly it out to the left and have it drifting right and flatten out and just glide straight towards the pin instead of diving away from it. Kevin trying the same line. Yeah, that's exactly pretty much what you're saying. <laughs> and Will's going with the sidearm here.
And he's pulled this out too far left as well. <laughs> Fortunate for Lucas to be out there in the open with yeah. how far he turned that over. Nice shot. Okay. Gettable. Nico gonna try to give this a soft bid. He's got that Annie floater. Very soft bid. A hard bid here from Kevin, I imagine. And he did throw a great shot there. Tough birdie to get though. Kevin has just been so close to a brilliant round. Me and my brother and my dad we're out there for hours just playing disc golf, having fun. That's like one of the first things we usually say, it's a great family sport. We got to do it as a family. And it builds relationship. Like I know my dad so much better because of disc golf. It's nice that that's something that we can connect and go do together. My parents are 100% behind it. Bad rounds, good rounds, doesn't matter. They always have a smile on their face. We don't call it sacrifice, we call it fun. Get out there and have fun. But then in the day, most important is have fun. This is one of my favorite holes in the course. Number 17, 415 foot par three, downhill, subtle bend to the left. Honestly, as a lefty, I, I think we have more fun throwing this shot than the right-handed players do. The long tracking turnover. Right, we get to throw a putter or mid-range shot just on a hyzer towards the woods and let it float over. Uh, right. The, the right-handed backhand play is going to be uh, either a mid-range or more of a fairway hyzer stand-up that just slightly drifts off to the left at the end. Yeah, you're tempted to want to throw a driver that kind of hyzers down the hill, but getting it to stop on the slope is what's challenging about that. So you're going to have to see players clubbing down. Yeah, it looks like Lucas going with a putter here. He has such a smooth release. And this has got a little bit too much stability for the ideal line. Wow. However, gets He's... a good tree there late to slow him down a bit. That was moving fast for a putter. Yeah. I mean, he throws with a lot of spin. You saw that one shot on eight get completely ricocheted. I... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Kevin giving us some Matty O vibes this round. Yeah, pulled that one a bit wide. Gets the help he's asking for, though, and falls out of the woods. Okay. Wow, dropped out of the sky. In it? In it? I'm, I'm having such Kevin. a good time watching this. Oh, man. Kevin uh, hitting chains from 130 straight downhill. If it hadn't hit anything, it was going to be 90 feet away. What a run. Lucas here with the birdie chance. Yes, sir. So a course that people weren't sure was up to par, I'll say, for scoring separation or scoring, you know, hot scoring. Mm -hmm. Um... We've got some players putting together decent rounds here at five down. Yeah. So just trying to keep it clean, get the birdies where you can. Yeah, definitely. 
an interesting mix-up giving the top players a course that doesn't just reward pure distance every time and when I was talking about a grab bag of a final hole hole 18 at this course is so challenging this was the hardest hole in the course by far a Try forehand to land here. yeah a forehand righty flex shot can skip into the mouth you have two different gaps that you have to choose from one is way tighter than the other the moment you walk up to your drive, you'll know whether or not birdie is in play or not. Most likely not. Most likely not. It is so specific. I've seen Nico lay these rollers down on this and actually have a lot of success. And that needed to stop. If it continued off to that left side, he is in a deep amount yeah. of trouble. Okay, Lucas going with roller as well. That's standing up a lot sooner, which is good. That's not terrible. No chance at birdie. Yeah, he's on that right side, which is that extremely tight fairway that you were talking about. Yeah, and and you're not gonna really birdie. For fairway, you. I say loosely. <laughs> and Kevin is just laying down a roller oh. right away. Come on. Thank you. I, I was an inch from that. That's the spot. That was incredible. That's the spot. That's where I said to land at. <laughs> it's Dr. Nathan's green zone. Just an incredible roller from Kevin there. He laid that down right away. Oh. And this is right. This was a 4.79 average. A five can happen so quick, you make one mistake. I would totally be okay with this one being a par five, as I believe it plays as a par five. Yeah. Will's just hoping it kicks him to a decent spot at this point. Yeah, Nico over on the left side showing you it's not much better than the right. Yeah, it's it's just a sprawling fairway. There's just so many pockets of trees. You don't know where the middle is. And if he can get just over top of that leaning tree, that is the gap he was going for. And just, you saw how small it was. He's now off on the left side. Kevin with the ideal drive. just not quite able to convert it's such a tight gap to hit two high level shots here to be able to get the birdie i have birdied this hole one time and it was with two completely lucky shots i have seen connor o'reilly on the other hand pure two shots to birdie this hole and i don't know if i've seen any other birdies in person So Nico throwing that shot up now for his bogey putt. Oh, you got a feel for Will, man. Yeah, just a struggle of a round. You know, we love seeing him out here, and you want, like, that, the classic success story of the, you know, champion coming back after some time away and coming right back to where he's supposed to be, but... And Lucas able to get out for a par putt now, I mm -hmm. think. Oh, that's and yeah, that's sad. Just an unfortunate kind of fitting into the round that Will's had here. He'll be looking to move on from this and get back under par tomorrow. for a par save here to remain five under. Okay. Nerves of steel for this first round. You love to see it. Yeah, just an incredible save. 
Nico for the bogey to drop in a six under par for the round, which does win his card. Just lots of strange things happening in the woods out here at Music City Open. I was thoroughly entertained, especially by this man right here. I don't know what he was going on today. But. Lots of stuff going on. Netted him a five under. Started off with no pars for the first four or five holes. Finishes with four in a row. Yeah. There you have it, folks. Fantastic day of disc golf at Cedar Hill. Mason Ford coming in for 10 under par. And yeah, 10 under. Yeah, that's just, the hot round. Just one of them. Well, we move to Mill Ridge. Very challenging course. We have one more round at Cedar Hill before we jump over to that one. Again, I'm Brian Earhart. He's Nathan Queen. We are signing off. We'll see you guys out there.